Hello guys, today I'll be working on this 4 terabyte uh, Seagate desktop HDD that belongs to Lambert family. Uh, most of the time this PCB is locked and will need a patch to be applied in order to uh, gain access to uh, certain portions of the drive known as the service area. So let's go ahead and uh, power this thing on and uh, listen to what this device sounds like. If it's making clicking noises uh, right off the start, then chances are heads will need to be uh, inspected along with the platters possibly. But if it uh, stays spinning, stays idling, then uh, maybe the problem is related to something else that we would be able to uh, uh, correct with help of PC3000. So let me just start the screen capture. Power on channel one. And the device starts up, it calibrates like it's supposed to. It even comes up ready. It gives proper ID. But as you can see, it's locked. So we're going to start the utility. What do we need to do at this point? I'm going to go into work with flash ROM image file. And we're going to select boot code and we're going to try to read it at the fastest. And save the copy of the ROM and apply the patch. Now that it's been read, I'm just gonna go back in. Fire it up again. At this point, I'm just going to disable a bunch of things that the hard drive does not need to worry about uh, when data is being extracted. And uh, most of it is going to be done through here. <coughs> okay, we're going to check the access to first sector and the last sector to confirm the translation is all good. Everything in between is just a matter of uh, functionality of heads. If, as long as we can work with them, the data will be captured. So I got a target drive right here. Slide it into the bay. Switch the screen into data extractor and uh, start imaging. We got the drive imaging 
on six out of eight heads currently because uh, head two and head six they are the problematic ones if we go into the status and have a look at the speed that the driver is currently running on without those two it's very close to the speed of our original uh, fully functional device so it's clocking over 100 megabytes per second which is uh, really good considering uh, uh, that it's got two heads that are degrading now if we turn them on we can see that our speed drastically reduces and uh, if we go into the map you can see that head two is actually struggling quite a bit if we isolate the head two and take it out we can check if head six is performing well so seems like the issues uh, with head six they're temporary issues related to specific areas of the drive whereas head two is a more permanent problem that uh, runs pretty much across the entire unit because we tried it at the beginning we tried it at the at the end uh, and uh, it's not improving so we're gonna keep the head two out of it for now and we're gonna finish the image using head zero one three four five six and seven and once that's captured most likely going to have to perform a head swap to capture head two. This is uh, um, data recovery f consisting a uh, large amount of video files. So because uh, video files generally just are big files, they require all the heads to be recorded with. And if we skip one head and exclude it from the recovery, uh, these files, even though we may have everything else captured, but because of the gaps, the files will not work. So we'll need to get those out as well. All right, so the image had been uh, fully done with the original headset. And as you can see along those green areas, sometimes we come across sections that are just all white. If we look at the head that is represented by it, it's head number two. So uh, because we didn't have that head present in the map, these gaps are now created and mainly that's because uh, the unit itself has a dead head number two so we're going to load it up I got uh, a compatible donor drive that was uh, previously used for some other cases and uh, after the head replacement we should be able to read head 2 on our patient. So let's begin. I'm just going to do a couple of things here uh, before we start. Not to mix things up. I'm going to write down the ending of the serial number of, of the patient on the PCB. Because now that we got a donor involved, they're both the same and they're not marked yet. So this one ends with GS5. GS5. and the donor 1C1. In order to remove the head assembly on this specific drive, the board has to be off the unit. For uh, that family, the uh, head combs are actually not part of the main kit. We need to use four A.
original headset. And the donor. That's pretty much it. So now we just gotta assemble everything back. Test the reading ability if uh, the drive has some problems reading. Then we may have to uh, transfer small portion of adaptives to help heads read a little better with the new headset. But um, I don't think that might be that will be necessary in this case. All right, let's try it. Um, now I'm just gonna prep the unit to to work without hiccups. Let's test this head out. Got access to head two. Uh, it seems to be moving steady enough. Let's see what we got on the performance side of things. So 77, 78, that's probably uh, very close to how it's going to run throughout the major uh, chunk of that uh, 500 gigs that are left out. Once that's captured, uh, the data can be dumped out to another working unit and presented to the client. Now, uh, there are going to be some areas, most likely, uh, on the surface of head 2 that will be slowing this thing down as we saw in the beginning um, of the uh, uh, drive but that's going to only result in a very minimal um, amount of data that's going to be affected so that's pretty much it we just got to wait it out 500 gigs are going to take so that's pretty much it we just got to wait it out 500 gigs will take a little bit of time to uh, uh, duplicate, but overall, this is gonna be a successful recovery, most likely very close to 100%. If you have any questions, as always, drop them in the comments below. But I think we've covered everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.